television has a lot of people talking and thinking these days, asking questions too. Questions like, are television stations linked together by the Bell system the way radio stations are connected? Well, that's one question we can answer. But first, let's look back to the beginning of cross-country telephoning. In those days, there were a few wires strung on slender poles. But as the demand grew, more and more wires were added to the poles. In some of the larger cities, this led to overcrowding of poles. Something had to be done. So Bell system engineers began looking for ways to make the wires smaller and to pack them into lead-covered cables. Today, these cross-country cables carry hundreds of wires, sometimes overhead and sometimes buried under the ground. As time went on and people found they could talk farther and hear better, more and more telephone calls were made. Telephone research men then had to find ways to make these wire pathways carry heavier traffic, ways to place more calls on each wire, yet keep the calls separate. This was done with what came to be known as carrier systems. It was first used on open wires, then on the pairs of wires inside the cables. As the need for still more calls developed, a wider electric highway was needed. A new type of line structure was found. It was given the name coaxial. Now a coaxial is really a copper wire strung through the center of a copper tube. But a single pair of these coaxials will carry hundreds of telephone conversations at once. Put eight coaxials into a cable and you have a small, compact unit. More calls can be carried at one time through this coaxial cable than could be carried by all three of these large conventional cables. Telephone engineers realized that this broad communications highway call coaxial could also be used to carry television programs from city to city. Thousands of miles of coaxial cable stretched across the country now form an important part of America's long-distance telephone system and television networks. There is another method of carrying hundreds and hundreds of simultaneous telephone calls and also television programs. It's called radio relay. Back in 1920, the first radio telephone service in history was established from Catalina Island to the California mainland. Bell Telephone engineers continued their research into radio for telephone use. This brought to the public such things as overseas telephone service, calls to and from ships at sea, and many other applications of radio. Before World War II, we started using very short waves for telephone use, between such places as Norfolk and Cape Charles, Boston and Provincetown. During the war, even shorter waves have come into use. And radio development for military purposes brought new techniques called microwaves. Following the war, these were applied to a microwave system from New York to Boston. Here's the way it worked. Microwaves shoot out like searchlight beams between transmitters set on high places. From New York, the beam is trained on Jackie Jones Mountain. Then it's picked up and relayed station by station to Boston. These microwave radio beams do about the same job in the air as the coaxials do underground. Carry hundreds of telephone calls at once, both waves, or carry the sight and sound waves of television. A good example of this is the Bell Systems Transcontinental Microwave Radio Relay System a chain of 107 microwave towers from coast to coast, designed to carry telephone messages and television. Well, there you have them, coaxial cable and radio relay, two new economical ways by which hundreds and hundreds of long-distance telephone calls and intercity television networks are provided. They are products of continuous research, development, and manufacture that will better serve the communication needs of the nation.